I made the Made for Mermaids Alana dress and I want to show you how it turned out in case you want to make one too and I have a feeling that you will. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss out when I post a new sewing video. I share pattern reviews like this one every Monday. You guys know I love sewing dresses and this one was no exception. I am excited to share the good, the bad, and the ugly of this dress pattern with you. The Made for Mermaids Alana dress was chosen as the Sew Together pattern for August. My Instagram followers voted on it from a group of knit dress patterns and I was happy they chose this one because I don't own any dresses like this at all. I think I was nervous to make one because I wasn't sure how flattering it would be, but I gotta tell you, I love this dress. I have worn it multiple times since I've made it. It's just so comfortable and easy to throw on, I, I can't resist it. The website describes Alana as a beautiful and relaxed fit knit pattern. You can choose from a high or low V neckline in the front. The back can also have a high or low V neck or a low scoop back. You can also add an optional strap or ties across the low back options. There are six hemline options, crop, top, curved top, mini dress or maxi length, and you can add a low mid or high side slits on the mini dress or maxi options. If that's all not enough for you, you can also add optional inseam pockets. The neckline, straps, and arm size are finished with knit binding. The pattern is obviously a simple design, but there are so many options to tweak each one from the neck so you could make so many of these. I made the low front neckline, but changed the V to more of a scoop just to make sewing easier. The V isn't difficult. It's just a little bit more finicky. And the day I was sewing this, I was not in the mood, <laughs> so I didn't do it. I made the low back converted to a scoop as well. This is the maxi length version with literally not a single alteration to the length. I am 5'5 five five for reference. The pattern comes with instructions for lengthening or shorting the pattern as needed, but I was pleasantly surprised with the length as is. It is perfect to wear with flat sandals in the summer. I also added the mid-length slits to the side seams, but I decided not to add the pockets because there is no way seam to anchor them, and I just hate floppy pockets, especially in a knit. For the knit binding, I did purchase some prepared jersey binding from Stylemaker Fabrics, which is so cool and will obviously make this um, attaching the binding so much easier, but I ultimately ended up leaving it off because the self fabric was just too good, too easy to work with. This is the Moody Blooms line from the Create Joy Project, a fabric line from Moda by Laura Muir. You can get it lots of places, but I got mine from Stylemaker Fabrics. The fabric is made from 50% cotton, 45% modal, which is like a brand name of rayon, and 5% elastane. The mix of cotton and rayon make this fabric stable while also soft and drapey. When I'm using a cotton rayon blended knit, I always make sure there is more cotton than rayon. This just makes it easier to sew with and less likely to stretch out over time. It's also um, not as clingy or, you know, the, there's not as much drape, so it doesn't hug your body as much. This fabric pressed nicely and sewed up with no issues on either my sewing machine or my serger. Two thumbs up from me. As for alterations, I didn't make any to the actual pattern. I just graded based on my measurements. However, I did add a shelf bra to the bodice. I just knew I wouldn't be comfortable wearing it without another layer of fabric, and I pretty much loathe strapless bras, even bandeaus. No, thank you. Adding the shelf bra was so simple, and I have a tutorial showing you just how I did it. Check the description box for a link to that. For the strapping, the pattern suggests using clear elastic to help stabilize it, but I didn't have any of that, so I just adhered some Trico interfacing instead. The straps might have stretched out a little bit, but I mean, not very much. And like I said, I've worn this dress several times prior to filming this video. What do you do when you don't have a notion that you need and you're like in the middle of a project? Are you a put the project on hold until you buy the thing kind of person? Or are you a make it work with what I've got kind of person? I'm clearly a make it work person. Sometimes that bites me in the butt, but this time I think it worked out fine. There are a lot of things I love about this dress. I feel like the fit is flattering considering there are so few seams. 
If I'm being super critical though, I'd say that the back hip needs to be a bit wider as there is the littlest bit of pooling above my bum. FYI, this is not a sway back issue, guys. I don't have a sway back, and many of you don't either. I think we see fabric pooling and we immediately think that there is a length issue, when in fact it can be resolved by addressing the width. So next time I make this dress, I'll add maybe half an inch to the back pattern piece at the hip, and then the dress should fall nicely along my back. If you'd like to learn how I get such a good fit right out of the gate like this, check out my Fast Fit system. It's the same worksheet that I use on every single pattern that I sew. I have linked it in the description box for you. If you're still having issues with fit after using the Fast Fit system, we can also do a one-on-one -on -one consultation. Um, that is also available at the link in the description box. And if you like seeing things like this that I have made, be sure to check out last week's pattern review. It was this really cute McCall's jumpsuit. I've linked it to the end screen here. If you are watching on mobile, you can grab the link in the description box. But that is going to do it for me today, y'all. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you very soon. Bye!